so far we've spoken to homeopathy as a science, and even your speculative approach mm -hmm. is still based on the scientific rationale. But uh, there are also people in our profession that go beyond what I might call modern homeopathy mm -hmm. to what I might call uh, postmodern homeopathy, for instance, using unorthodox approaches such as paper remedies mm -hmm. or PC resonances. And the idea there is that such remedies are produced by projecting a person's consciousness onto mm -hmm. the water rather than as traditionally mm -hmm. uh, prepared through a reproducible method. So I'm interested in knowing whether you've used such remedies at all yourself? No, I, I don't use those remedies. I uh, keep myself to a real basic homeopathic remedies. Mm -hmm. so I'm curious, how come? Uh, there are also people, that, for instance, who use radionics, mm -hmm. uh, things like that. And sometimes it will be easy for me because I want to prescribe sometimes remedies that I cannot get, and then with radionics you can make that. Right. But I uh, decided not to do that because the two reasons for it. First is that uh, I will uh, lose some credibility okay. for a lot of people. And now I, I can say, you know, this is really the only bad remedy that I prescribed. So there's no question about what it is. And with radionics and also with paper remedies, there's, there's questions, what are you really prescribing? Yeah. Uh, so uh, I think it's one step too far ahead. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I don't have experience uh, experience with it, but I know from quite a lot of homeopaths who say that it works and that they have good experience with it. Mm -hmm. So and is it science or is it shamanism? Like where do you place good shamanism? Is science? Sure. <laughs> and yet you don't practice that, so that's why I'm trying to understand um, what makes you ultimately stick with the whole thing. Is that you cannot split consciousness from life mm -hmm. and that's even the case in, in physics where the, the consciousness of the experiment of influences the experiment right so the whole idea that that shouldn't be possible is unscientific okay so you believe it's possible but yet but i don't do it mm -hmm. because i'm busy with a scientific development and it would interfere with that right and it could very well be that it works, but I don't know from my own experience. Okay, so it maybe it's, it's something that you perhaps might be open to, to exploring at a later stage of development of, of homeopathy as a science, yeah. for example? Or for instance, when, when I'm desperate in a, in a, a case where, we, where a patient is dying and I want to have a remedy, maybe I could do it. Right. Uh, you know, and you don't want to wait uh, two months when they die tomorrow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but. Uh, the other thing is that it won't develop our science further. Mm -hmm. And that's a very interesting point. Yeah. It, because then you prescribe it, but you never know what you have done. Yeah. The whole idea of classification, whenever I would have done that with paper remedies, what would people have said? Mm -hmm. And, and it, you're, you're not grounded enough to... You know, you have to have a good grounding to become more subtle. You don't start with subtle, you know, your, your basis has to be firm and then the, the upper part of your building can be very light, but not the lower part of it. Mm -hmm. Okay, and you're still building the foundations. Yeah. Now, despite what you just said, you still dance on the edge of the avant-garde through your sense proving. Mm -hmm. So, could you describe, first of all, what it is and then how, you, how do you justify it as compared to more elaborate provings, whether they be mm. full provings or partial conventional provings. Mm. Now, sense proving, how I do it is I, I, I do it mostly with plants. Uh, I think you can also do it with animals, but I'm not busy with that. Um, and you take just a plant with you and, and you, the name and you start looking at it, smelling it, tasting it, getting as much impressions from the plant as you can get. Mm and then meditate on it and see what, what impressions you get. And that's how it is done. And you can do it half an hour or an hour. Or you can do it with a group, or you can do it alone. Uh, that are different forms. Um, I started doing it I, uh, when I was on Bali once on a retreat. And then there was a story of an old herbologist who was a doctor there and he was I think a century ago or something, and he was not content with what he was doing. So he almost skipped, but then someone said, no, no, you cannot skip, you have to continue. 
and when you don't know what it is, ask the plant themselves what they do. Mm. So we started talking to the plants. <laughs> and of course, when we hear about talking to the plants, but people say it's nonsense because plants don't talk. But talking to the plants for most for those people is more a uh, more extensive way of communicating with the plant. Mm -hmm. and, and when you taste a plant, you get a kind of impression of it. When you, when you eat a pepper, you know that you have a pepper. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's a kind of communication. Right. And that's where you, you enter into your own shamanism, I guess, that you say is part of a legitimate part of science, is the actual direct connection with, with nature. Yeah, but that's when you, when you eat a pepper. Mm -hmm. Is that shamanism? <laughs> what's, what's the boundary? What's, right. Yeah. There, there is none. There is none. Yeah. There is none. Mm -hmm. It's impressions. And you never know what they mean. You know, yeah, so you have to confirm all those symptoms of provings mm -hmm. later on. Right. So I see my sense provings as just speculation. Mm -hmm. Just a beginning and entry yeah. point to yeah. using the remedy. It, yeah, it's an entry point. It's a good way of expressing it. And because when you don't have any idea, you don't know where to start. Right. But when you have an idea, you can you can try it in a case where it's the same kind of state. Mm -hmm. And when it's really then curing, then you know, okay, this is what it is. And then you learn more because the patient will have more than the proving has and a more bit of bigger background. Mm -hmm. And then you, when you have another of that family, you can generalize again. And then, right. then it starts growing. So you're big on clinical data and generalization rather than provings, right? Which you've, Proving you've mentioned before about. that yeah. they have their own issues even yeah. when they're comprehensive. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And also the comprehensive ones, they are not completely reliable. Uh, in fact, uh, every proving can have several levels and many prover, provings, they get stuck in the expression phase. Right. When you go one level deeper in a proving, then you come to the problem phase where you understand where all those symptoms are coming from, what the meaning of them, what those symptoms are. It, you can also say, when you understand the remedy from the proving, then you have the problem. When you don't understand the remedy from the proving, you have just expressions. Mm -hmm. That's another way of, of, of expressing it. It's about understanding. When you have an essence, the whole thing makes sense. And that's where you should want to be. That's where you should want to go. Because that is much more important than all those expressions. You, you lose yourself in all those expressions, like in the material medica. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the old provings, they are just expression fades. They never came to the source, to the essence. For instance, um, you feel betrayed. No, and of course that you are angry. Yeah? Being betrayed is more essential, and being angry is an expression. Mm -hmm. So then you understand, okay, it's lo logical that he is angry. I understand that when I would be betrayed, that's one of the ways how you can react. Mm -hmm. You can also give up, of course, and that's another thing. And then you have someone is giving up and someone is angry. Mm -hmm. But that's not available from provings as such? As it's very difficult because when you don't have that theme of betrayal, mm -hmm. you don't know where the two are coming from. You have to go to the problem phase. Mm -hmm. I think that my way of looking at our materia medica from the beginning already was that it's not logical the way it is. We should be able to understand the materia medica. And of course it takes an effort and it takes a kind of background how to classify it to be able to do that. So and the point with classification is that you expand your whole field of materia medica. The amount of remedies that are that I'm using now is hugely expanded, and that gives a much precise, more precise cure in more cases. For instance, before I found the lanthanides, it was difficult to help people with autoimmune disease, and it was not only my experience; it was the experience of all the homeopaths. And with the lanthanide, that suddenly changed. Now we have. I won't say we cure everyone, but you know we can do a lot for those patients, and many of them they don't have complaints anymore after a while. So it's a big shift. Mm -hmm. So my idea is that the more remedies you know, the more people you can cure. 
so currently homeopathy it seems it's um, even though it's dealing with a very advanced form of energy mm -hmm. in a sense it's a young science it's much like say the science of electricity was in the beginning mm -hmm. of the 19th century where there was still tinkering with mm -hmm. phenomena mm -hmm. and making generalizations but not yet having the mm -hmm. you know maxwell's equations for example to yeah. make sense of the mm -hmm. underlying mathematical order yeah um and what you're trying to do is to come up with those equations yeah and ultimately figure out what's the underlying yeah. structure of that, homeopathy that's basically what we need mm -hmm. but maybe we need another form of mathematics for it right because Measurements are not uh, easy in the internal world. Mm -hmm. So maybe we need something like a topology instead of uh, a metric science, a metric mathematics, mm -hmm. if that makes any sense for you. Yeah, I can imagine if, if mathematicians actually got exploring yeah. what sort of math would match yeah. homeopathy. It would be a very interesting marriage of sciences. But that's still too far away right <laughs> <laughs> we are, we're not at that level yet yeah what sort of direction would you like to see homeopathy head in the next uh, decade or two we have two levels of development one is uh, sociologically and one is scientifically mm -hmm. i think with we spoke the, about the, the scientific, scientific part, is yeah. uh, i think obvious where i want to go uh, more understanding more classifications mm -hmm. and more even trying to go to a level deeper of really understanding maybe in a mathematical formula that you understand what you do. Mm -hmm. Sociologically, I, I would like to have it to become mainstream, that it's just uh, a university study and that that's what it should be. Mm -hmm. um, and that it should uh, be incorporated in mainstream medicine as a specialism. My idea is that the best way to do homeopathy is not as in the past that they had homeopathic hospitals, but that you have hospitals where homeopaths work parallel with normal doctors. Mm -hmm. You know, and as a homeopath, when you when you can treat someone well, the normal doctors have to do less. When yeah. you cannot treat them well, they can prevent things happening. And that's why it's very good to work parallel and not to mix the two. Oh, right, okay. That, that's my vision of how it should be. Like integrative medicine, but yeah. done with different yeah. specialists yeah. that respect each yeah. other. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so what can we homeopaths do to raise the academic level of homeopathy, even while homeopathy is still outside the universities and there are, there's very little leisure time for people to, to practice theoretical homeopathy? Just cure as many people as you can. Because the proof of the pudding is in the eating. And the more we can treat and cure real severe diseases, mm -hmm. the more it cannot be denied, denied anymore. That's, that's what it is about. Become better homeopath. Mm -hmm. But I think the scientific development is a very important issue. And uh, with classifications and getting more remedies, then you have much more uh, possibilities to cure cases. So do you have a vision or at least an inkling of a, of a vision of the future based on your homeopathic work? I don't know where it will come. You know, homeopathy, when it's really true, it will survive and it will become mainstream somewhere, somehow. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it will be in one year, two years, 200 years, 2000 or 200,000 years. Yeah. I don't know. But it has to be because the truth will always prevail. It cannot be stopped. Mm -hmm. Only temporarily. 